Hey everyone, it's the Essays and Espresso podcast once again. Uh, yes. Boken is back this time. Hey, how hey, you doing, Boken? Hey, fine. Hey. hey, hey. Welcome back, Boken. Hope we didn't fun. talk about replacing you. I'll see that. I still haven't gotten around to listening to the episode because it's not yet out. Oh, but we will well, be include I, that I mean, in the audio. It will be today. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But uh-huh. not today when this episode is out. Speaking of this episode, uh, this time we're going to be talking about... You didn't introduce wa- me. Well, I mean, you already spoke, so people heard you. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, today's question is, why is there resistance towards media critics? I think uh, this was brought up by Boken specifically. Yeah, it was. But I was very timid about this subject, but they, they wrestled me into doing it. I think I think there's things to talk about. Yeah, uh, there's things I, to discuss. I just uh, I didn't see the other side of this argument, so I was timid. But now now I'm excited about it. Oh, goody! Uh, but before we get into that, Acer, what have you been up to? Not much. I've been uh, doing. That's my... a lie. Okay. <laughs> 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 I've been doing my Demon Souls video, and I've been deep diving a lot into that. Uh, but first of all. Since I'm, I'm breaking the video in two, I'm going to do like a cohesive story breakdown and then I'm going to do like the analysis video. And for the story breakdown, I've been watching a lot of Vadi video videos just to get like, how do, you, how do you do a story breakdown? Like, how would you structure it? What's the tone you set? What are the visuals you use? And I'm going to do none of the stuff that he does because he has access to like good footage. He has, uh, we talked about this a bit uh before we were recording, he has access to, like, swooping, beautiful aerial shots of, like, ooh, look at this beautiful yeah, church. he's hacked motion. the game with, like, emulators and stuff, so he's able to have a no-clip camera that allows yeah. him to, like, do all this stuff that you're not normally supposed to do. He'll, like, remove the HUD and he'll make it really clean, make the whole thing really clean, 60 FPS and stuff. I'll do none mm. of that. For me, it's just going to be like a character and it's going to be really bad lighting and he's going to be like, huh. so here's here's the Isterella, is, Isterelle and it, it belonged to Rizaya or Lizaya. Game has some weird translation issues. Um, but yeah, I've been watching a lot of other video videos. He has really upped the quality of his productions since he began. I don't know. You, you guys must have watched him at some point, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I watched just Dark Souls videos and then didn't care anymore. <laughs> I think anyone that's had, like, even a passing interest in Dark Souls has stumbled upon his videos, at least somewhat. Yes. I've seen a few of his videos, and I think they're pretty good. He's he's not bad. Well, nobody said he was bad. But yeah, he, he's he's really. <laughs> I I wasn't I wasn't trying to imply that anyone did. I was just saying it's pretty good. Anyway, uh, his videos are really good. My video is not going to have those production values. It's going to be a lot more just a character walking through an area, and I'll. The game has like five minutes of cutscenes, and I'll have to space those out <laughs> to get the most effect out of them. But more importantly, I've been doing a lot of deep digging into. Demon Souls, the cut contents and stuff. And there's a lot to talk about here. Uh, Daniel. Oh, yes. Bogan, you, bo- you both know about the Giant's Art Stone, the level yes. that was cut. Yes. Did you know that the Giants were wolf men? I thought they were lizard men. Nope. I thought the, the area was going to be comprised of a bunch of lizard men. Maybe. There's one, uh, there was one enemy NPC, uh, enemy NPC, enemy model which is a lot like the snake dudes from Dark Souls, except it's just like a human body in a suit of armor, and then it just has like a regular snake coming out of the head, which goes like 90 degrees forwards, and it's so bad. And there's also a bunch it was, of... It was probably a placeholder until they finished sure, the model. Sure, but uh, there's also a uh, a bunch of sort of aristocrat characters, like people with mo- monocles, and they have like canes and they're dressed in really uh, sort of Victorian snobby clothing which is really interesting whether they were supposed to be used for boletaria 
or more likely I think they were supposed to be the royals of Latria because they uh, they have that sort of more advanced uh, dis- visual design. It looks like their clothing is more advanced than what we find in Boletaria. Uh, and yeah, like I said, the giants were probably wolfmen because there are like three or four different enemies unused, which are these weird wolf hybrid giants. And man, it's weird because they don't they don't even they don't begin to fit with the rest of the game. Like they, they look like jokes, basically, compared to like the visual style of the rest of the game. What are your thoughts on I that? I mean, <laughs> I mean, they're unfinished, so it's a little unfair to say like, "Oh, they totally don't fit." Like, I'm well, not, I'm not, not from... I'm not calling anyone at FromSoft out. I would never, ever <laughs> call anyone at FromSoft out for unfinished content in their games. Never would I do that. But I'm just saying, Liar. <laughs> we did not have a 20 minute conversation before this episode, just so everybody knows. <laughs> where we had a big disagreement about the quality of these Souls games. I think they're pretty good overall. Uh, I'm not going to say what these guys think. And also, that was definitely the disagreement. But going back to what I was saying, it's... it's uh, Yeah, they're probably they're unfinished. Almost certainly they're unfinished. But even, even conceptually, they just don't seem to work. Because Demon Souls is a really human-focused game, and like an entire area inhabited by weird wolfmen, it just feels like it would be such a weird departure from the rest of the game. Um, but, I, but I don't know. Yeah. I don't know whether those were just supposed to be enemies or whatever. Whether or those were actually the giants. Or... Sure, could have been. Could have been placeholders. Maybe they just used them uh, while they were testing levels or something. I mean, you could also. You, you also have to take into consideration that it within Demon Souls' code, there is a boss from Ninja Blade for some <laughs> reason. Just there. The model is just there. Is that the like, giant thing? Yes. Yeah, I, like, never, the, I didn't know what that giant, was. So I think it's like some giant like snake looking thing. Like it's there's also the Lancer from Gears of War. The model for it is there for some reason in Demon Souls' code. Like, it's just there. So, like, sometimes you can, when you dig into code, you will you will find unfin- unfinished elements that yeah. may hint to something that was planned for the game. Or sometimes you're just going to find random strands of data that have nothing to do with anything. And it's just left over from, like, other games that's just there for some reason. They just True. forgot to delete it. Or they just not even forgot to delete it. They just didn't feel the need to delete it. They were just like, whatever. It doesn't yeah. matter. Nobody's like, going to see this. It's five megabytes. Nobody will know. But something which was almost certainly not just a leftover from... Uh, something that was probably not a placeholder, I should say. Uh, you can find deer animals. And you can also find... There's these weird... Deer? Weird Did you say deer? deer? Okay. Yeah, like, like Bambi. And... Uh, there's also this weird lanky humanoid figure who has like an owl for his head. Like he has an owl head on a really lanky human body. Well, that's like those enemies on Dark Souls, aren't they? With a crow head, basically? No, 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 no. no though not even remotely. Like I'm, I'm talking this thing. It looks like you just put the... It looks like you took an owl's head and you just glued it on top of Slenderman's body. Like, it is so weird looking, this thing. Uh, but the deer is just a regular deer, which makes me think probably that and the concept art uh, in the which you see in the beginning of the game where there's like this person on the outside near some ruins and they're talking about all the people who live in Boletaria and all the heroes there. And you can see them. They have like, I think they have like a staff with like a light on it and there's deer there. This makes me think you were supposed to just be able to go outside at some point and meet it. It's like, oh, it's just a deer that walks around. So but that not didn't a, not end a up. fucked up looking deer? It's nope. just a deer. Just, okay. just a deer. There's also rats. Giant rats. Sure. Not Kind of like kind of like in Dark Souls, but not as disgusting looking. They're very clean. Uh, 
Uh, but what's interesting it's, about that this, sounds more like it would have been an NPC if it was clean looking. No, not not clean in the sense that it wasn't a disgusting rat. More clean in the sense that it's it's missing some texture work. Oh, so okay, I, I get yeah. what you're saying. And uh, what's interesting about that rat though is that you can actually see it in the game because there's a status ailment. Well, first of all, you can see the rats in the uh, in the Valley of Defilement. But there's also a status ailment. I think it's plague they give you. And that shows you like a face of a rat. Or may not be plague. It's some status ailment. And that rat is the one that was unfinished. Hmm. Which is really weird. So whether they created a rat specifically to get like its face for that status ailment, I don't know. But it's still interesting. Okay. Yeah. And the, my, there's also just alternate cutscenes. Like, there's one cutscene of the Tower Knight where you fight the Phalanx, which is really weird. Like, you open up the gate and he's just, like, crouching there. And the, So instead of the Tower Knight, it's the Phalanx? No, instead of the Phalanx, it's the Tower Knight. Oh, oh, okay. In that, in that, in that space, yeah. Um, that probably does, would have been too tough of a fight that it, early on in the game. Yeah, and it's also just... It, Maybe it's because I've played the game so much, but that looked ridiculous. Like this this 50-foot knight with his giant shield just holed up in this tiny little room. It just looks yeah, so Yeah, that's probably weird. another reason why he was moved. It just didn't look right. <laughs> uh, uh, another one is there was probably a point in the Storm King boss fight where you were supposed to, after doing enough damage, it there was there's a cutscene that plays where it crashes and it gets impaled on all the stone monoliths and it's just oh that sounds cool yeah and it's just sort of stuck there and i imagine it was just you're supposed to just swipe at its eye and do the last bit of damage kind of like they did with the dragon god where you slice its horn the 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 worst boss in demon souls yeah one of the worst bosses in souls yeah yeah it's it's it can't even really be called a boss uh you know uh I've having played Demon's Souls a lot recently. The stealth option for that boss, you don't need to do it. If you if your if your HP is over one thousand, you can just brute force your way through. Always heal to full. Never leave a sliver of health missing. Always have full health at every moment, and you can just brute force your way through that thing. Is there a way to actually kill the Dragon God without activating the no. the ballistas? It, it, no. It's impossible. You can't. No, you can't. It, you... it doesn't have hmm. a hitbox outside of its face. Hmm. And it doesn't uh, register damage. You can't reach it from the uh, from any point other than after hmm. you've shut it down. That's kind of lame. Yeah, I imagine if uh, I imagine if they did that boss today. It, well, they kind of did a similar esque boss in that uh, dragon area from uh, Dark Souls Three, where you're sort of running around the boss, and then it's just a one-hit kill. But uh, yeah, that's sort of the worst of the spectacle fights. Anyway, my favorite cutscene, which was cut, and this is going to wrap up my uh, my dumping of this unused content. Remember that final cutscene with Alant right before you fight him, and he like takes his cape off, he turns around, and he sort of points the sword at you? There's sure. an there's an alternate version of that cutscene where once he drags his sword out, the blue dragon flies above him and he points the sword at you and the dragon like screams in the background with the where the open cat where the broken castle is and it is so much cooler, but I also think that the current cutscene is better because the dragon doesn't do anything in the fight. Yeah, it might it might be that might have given some poor conveyance where yeah. like... It, it is or, also, it's also if possible... Any, uh, oh, go on. Yeah. Now, I was going to say, like, it, it also could have been because they originally wanted the dragon to do something during the fight. But yeah. since they couldn't get it to work, they just axed it. Yeah. I, 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 I was going to say that, but I was also going to say it's possible then that they had both cutscenes if you killed the dragon with Bjor before uh, going into fight a land, then you wouldn't have the dragon in that mm. fight. Um, and yeah, so that's my uh, sort of deep dive into Demon Souls. There's definitely something I'm missing. 
But, uh, yeah. Any questions, boys? No. No. Qu- questions? I'm going to wait no, for the video. Really. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, finally a video of yours I can watch. <laughs> I'm kind of... I'm kind of hoping if uh, when Frontsoft releases El- El- Elden Ring, um, that they do look back to Demon Souls for inspiration because I feel like Demon Souls had it was the most experimental of the Souls games, and I like to see that ex- that sense of experimentation yeah. to come back. It's the only one which wasn't dumbed down for the mouth breathing masses. Did you say? <laughs> that's uh, that's not what I said. Not Somebody even close. said it. Somebody said it. No. Uh, Only you. We're not. We're not. Go, we're not having that conversation again on air, though. B- Boken, what have you been doing? <laughs> I've been playing a small game, which is this. Is just going to be a small shout out. It's called. Uh, what the fuck is it called? It's called Kind Words. Lo-fi chill beats to write to. Oh, okay. I think that's the actual title. And it's not even like a game. It's just you guys have never been on 4chan, right? I've no. seen screenshots from 4chan. Okay, so no. I get how it works. Dubs. I have tricks. a very dark history with 4chan before <laughs> oh, I God. before I actually got off the website, and it was like the best decision I ever made. <laughs> like I've been around 4chan uh, since I want to say 2004. 2004. When, when the, well. 2004 yeah i think so yeah and then for like 13 years or something um where the memes just started and fortune was actually funny and like the whole shock value of the place was funny and there are good well actually this this shouldn't be about fortune but (laughs) 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 there are good sides to fortune one of the good sides is it's also a downside, but everyone is anonymous, right? Yeah. And uh, there are different sub-boards of 4chan where you can discuss different topics. And probably the best board on 4chan is called Advice, which is just you go there, you write down whatever fucking problem you have, and then people answer you, or give you some hints or give you some some advice on what you should do you know it's it's can be everything it, can be women troubles can be i don't is know is the advice good <sighs> i guess it just depends it depends but it's just even if it's not it's good to hear different people's opinions and because it's anonymous people don't hold back yeah you can tell like you yourself can ask questions that you wouldn't ask people in real life or that I wouldn't ask you because you know me, mm. you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, There's nothing uh, I wouldn't ask you, Bogan. I'm an open <laughs> book to you. <laughs> okay. And I, I always like the advice board in general. And I hate 4chan because 4chan is a fucking garbage pool of alt-right Nazis. But that's why I had to leave. And now there's this game called Kind Words, which is basically the advice board but not with filled with with scum of the of the earth and that's kind of nice like in kind words you just write down your problem in a letter and then your letter gets sent to the world and then people see it it's completely anonymous and then they give you some you know some motivation some advice whatever it is and then so this isn't so this is just like a forum it's not a video game or it's not really a game you can collect a bunch of stickers, uh, but it's really just a forum. Yeah, yeah it's, it's an anonymous forum for helping other people how, uh, and having people help you. It's interesting how the anonymity and sort of chaos of 4chan produced a lot of a lot of good stuff, a lot of bad stuff, and now you have something like this, which takes one of those good things and just removes it from the. Uh, cesspool. Quote I mean, I, I'm I'm not saying that these that the people who made kind words were inspired by fortune. It's just what it reminds me of. Oh, yeah. Uh. One of the good sh- things about fortune that I can now find outside of fortune, which is a win-win. I always enjoy the uh, Dungeons and Dragons green texts. It was just like <laughs> these crazy stories from Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. 
but yeah that's it's just you know it's very wholesome and uh, it, if you have any any trouble you know the game costs like three bucks on steam or something it's just nice Dan- to to go there and, and rant a bit daniel daniel you should probably go there with your problems no i'm good <laughs> I'd rather keep it bottled up and then it uh, manifests itself later in my life and then I have I can't do anything about it at that point. Yeah, but that's that's future Daniel's problem. So yeah, yeah, yeah and I, I know from personal experience that, uh, <laughs> that a you know, he's a fucking joke? asshole. He goes, well, that's a future Bojack problem. And then like 10, 10 minutes later into the episode, he goes, damn you, future, damn you, past Bojack. Oh, that's right. Could have that prevented this. I, I'm... This, no, wait a minute. Bojack stole that from The Simpsons, though. Probably. Because Homer Homer was eating, like, a jug of mayonnaise, and he was like, and Lisa was like, don't, don't you have any problem? Like, aren't you scared what it's going to do to you? And he was like, huh, that's future Homer's problem, and I do not envy him. <laughs> or something. It's like, no, I want, I want to do it right now, though. I don't care if future me has to deal with him. Fuck him. <laughs> a moment uh, on the lips? A lifetime on the hips. That's what they say. <laughs> That's a Big Bang Theory joke. That's a joke that predates the Big Bang Theory. Oh, God, I Probably, feel bad for yes. snickering. <laughs> get get that trash out of here. Fucking what, Big Bang Theory? Big Bang. Fucking, ugh. <laughs> get that out of here. Talk about the most personality devoid nothing show of all time. You guys want to hear like, something? This, yeah. It's such a fake nerd. If show. I want to fucking ruin my channel, I'm gonna make a defense of the first three Big Bang Theory episodes, uh, seasons. Sorry, not episodes. Wow. I could make like a 90 minute video on that. Just like poking rants about the Big Bang Theory. No, I'm gonna very academically <laughs> defend it. <laughs> the rise and fall of Big Bang Theory. Yeah, it's it's yeah, that, awful. That's probably like, better. It's terrible now but the you first didn't bring three this topic episodes up, but do you want to dive a bit into this seasons no i don't want to dive into it <laughs> could you give me like the 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 footnotes what happened what was the what changed it um, got shitty it became friends with computers and oh. before it had actual structured jokes and good delivery and it wasn't all about you know boys and girls like Bazinga, when Sheldon says Bazinga. That is, I was just going to say that the Bazinga <laughs> meme is so overblown. And you can, like, I, 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 I knew this, but then when I had this discussion, I actually looked up how many Bazinga jokes there are on the show. It starts in, epi- in, in season three, episode one, I think, or like two. And there are maybe five Bazinga jokes in the entire season. And it ends in a ball pit scene where Sheldon just screams Bazinga, Bazinga, Bazinga. And then it's never brought up again. But for some reason, uh-huh. the, the image has emerged that every joke in the Big Bang Theory ends with Bazinga. I could Even have that was Bazinga. a very like they, they structure that in one season and it, it built on itself and then it was done and somehow people don't get that i could well, have sworn that was, was like it brought his up actual like that was his catchphrase though no That's really like, was it, hear that was, it was but wait wait was it brought up in later seasons maybe or, i i stopped watching after like uh, season six or something but people made that joke like people were ranting about bazinga being a meme i think even after the fourth season or something yeah. And Is it's, that it's really just it's, there are maybe five instances where Sheldon goes bazinga, and it's always like he the, the it's it's a it's a functional joke because he keeps applying it in different instances, in different contexts, and then at the end it's it's driven to its extreme, and then they're done with it. I think people just don't like the word. Okay, sounds <laughs> dumb. Is that show still going? Yes. Yeah, so, I think oh so, or is there no? Maybe it's it ended, and now there's Young Sheldon, right? Oh yeah, there is Young Sheldon. Yeah. <laughs> what a That's painful a thing. show that must be. Uh, I don't know. Daniel, did your parents ever come to, to you and be like, "Oh, you you'd probably like the Big Bang Theory because they're just like you"? 
uh, no, not my parents, but I, I did have my uncle. Uh. My uncle, <laughs> for a while, really liked Big Bang Theory. I don't know if he still does, but there was a, there was a, a, a bit, and he was like, oh. You'll probably really like... He didn't say, like, because they're just like you, but he was like, <laughs> oh, you'd probably really like it. Yeah. Do you know what I would... The, you know what joke I never want to hear revisited in my life? Oh, look who's just come out of his cave. I was fucking 14 years old. And you moved to a city where I didn't know anybody. Of course I'm going to stay in my room. It sounds you like you have some out. issues. Yeah, I, uh, we'll we'll cut that out surely. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, no. that was uh is that all you wanted to talk about kind words and big bang theory? I didn't want to talk about big bang theory. <laughs> I don't. But I'm going to talk about it more if you make me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll I'll try to revisit it in the episode. Don't you worry. No, what I also wanted to talk about is The Last of Us which I finally played in, prepare, in uh, preparation for The Last of Us 2. Okay. Yeah. I have not played The Last of Us yet. Oh, have you, oh. Acer? Yeah, I've played it. Okay. Of course I have. I, I live okay, in the universe. I just, what, what are you I talking just about? I just want to know, I just want to know, is it as great as people say it is? Is it, or is it profusely overrated? Like, what, 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 just give me a general your general thrust uh, of opinion on it. Bogan? It's profusely overrated. Okay. I would say I would say it is the absolute pinnacle of that type of game, but that type of game isn't that great. Like that sort of third person Max Payne uncharted sort of game. This is the pinnacle Max of Payne that. Max Payne used to be Max fucking pa- good. No. I, I mean I mean no, Max, no, Payne no, 3. No. Max Payne 3. Yeah. 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 Okay. That, I was gonna say because Max Payne one and two are very technical shooters. Yeah, I, I'm I'm talking about that sort of seventh generation generic military like shooter cover cover shooter. shooter. Yeah. Let's get this right. This is the pinnacle of that, and but, if you like that sort of game, go for it. But it's also cover shooter plus stealth plus yeah uh, crafting uh, crafting yeah. Okay, let let me ask you this then. It's very overrated, but despite that overratedness, would you still say it's a good game? No, or no, 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 no. no. <laughs> you think it's a, it's so it's an average game. It's it's like the blandest fucking thing, and I think the okay. the issue is that I don't know how much I would have liked it back then when it came out, but looking yeah, at holy it now, shit, it's seven years old. Wow, I feel yeah, old. maybe even eight, isn't it? Well, we're we're early into twenty twenty, but. 2013. Oh, I thought 2012. Well, it came out with Grand Theft Auto 5 and Bioshock Infinite. It's just, uh, it's so nothing. And so many of the things that bother me are in it. Like those uh, main ca- like a lot- characters constantly talking to themselves and talking like to A lot of other. people, a lot of people make a big deal about the writing and it's like, oh, the story is so good. The characters <coughs> yeah. are so good. Which I didn't get at all, and so okay, interesting. I, uh, Acer, what did you think about the story itself? When I first played it, uh, well, it's Naughty Dog. It's like it's a competent story told well, but it's nothing exceptional. And also, I I don't like the way Neil Druckmann does drama, where it's like I don't know. Um, you know, we it's it's he, I don't think he understands that you can you can do you can do powerful moments without oh, the camera is shaking and everything's going crazy and then everything goes like you you can do subtlety too and I don't think Neil Druckmann does that in his games, which is interesting because he says that he's a big fan of Fumito Ueda, who d- does that stuff really well. You, yeah, I don't know, weird. I will, say, I, I will say, I will I, say, I lied a little bit. I said I never played Last of Us. I actually did play through the intro sequence. Oh, we've been scammed, Bogan. Oh my and, god. Ah! Uh, I, I pretty much stopped playing when it did the, fa- like the fast forward to... Uh, where 20 the, I guess, years the, later. The main, yeah, where the main game actually years. begins. Jesus. I wasn't sure uh, how much I, time I, passed. 
I actually did really like that intro sequence. I thought that that was done very well. Sure. It's fine. It's It was probably better t- uh, seven years ago when zombies weren't so fucking played out. I sure. I don't I don't know though because I remember 2013 zombies were very played out at that point. Yeah. Like I think this was the sort of last gasp of people having any energy for zombies. Yeah. <laughs> and that, yet we that's kept probably going. True. <laughs> yeah, and then we just kept going for 7 years. <laughs> um so with a story, would you agree with me Asa that if this was a movie mm. it would get like no one would gonna watch it. It would be I wouldn't say left out of the theaters, but no one would give a shit if this was a movie. It's it's like it's like Children of Men without the sort of flair. It's like a very generic post apocalypse sort of survival zombie movie story. Yeah, and Children of Men is not even, you know, zombies. That Yeah, yeah. It's a slightly more interesting premise. Yeah, and like the execution of that premise is really good. This is like generic zombie story. Go. Yeah, pretty much. But then also, I play the game, and the gameplay itself is also incredibly generic. Nothing really like gels. The stealth is really mm. borderline dysfunctional, and I'm playing on normal, the, uh... so I don't. I might as well just not care and, and bother. They give you the, the the detective mode for some reason. Oh, for, that that made me so mad. You basically get the Batman vision, because I don't know. You like normies well. play this game and they can deal with not seeing enemies through f- three fucking wall- walls. Yeah, but you know what? I played that game on the crushing difficulty. I think it's called crushing. It's called crushing in the Uncharted games, the highest one. And that's they turn it off there. The game is uh, it's. It's borderline unplayable in crushing difficulty <laughs> because it is like it doesn't communicate when it, when it's in stealth it does nothing to communicate it to you. Yeah no it it doesn't even communicate to you when you're being seen or when you're yeah. making too much noise. So you just have to brute force your way through and like okay here's the where the enemy is okay I I made it 10 seconds further okay. But uh it looks nice. But but th- so that's my, my overall issue is the gameplay isn't particularly good. It doesn't really make the story any better. Like it doesn't play towards the themes. No. There's a lot of cutscenes and a lot of like characters walking slowly, talking to each other. A lot of, yeah, over, a lot of overdrawn uh, animations of people, you know, building ladders or moving crates and all that shit where you just hold forward. And then the story itself of... isn't particularly good either. So I'm I'm just wondering why why am I playing this? Like why is this so well regarded? How long is it? Uh it's like 10 hours. Yeah, 10, 12. Maybe. Okay. All right. I, I was bored. I, I was I, I've had bored. it <laughs> I've had it sitting in my collection for such a long time. Like I, I would say um you were talking about your collection. I interrupted you. Sorry, Daniel. No, it's fine. Uh, all I was saying was like, I just had the game sitting in my collection for so long. And it's like, I don't know why. I just, I, I, I've been meaning to get around to it. I want to play it. But I've never really felt that compelled to like take it out and be like, all right, let's fucking do this. The problem is you can you, you already have played the game if you've played other games. <laughs> like this. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean... Th- at the like same time, all... though, I I consider myself a pretty uh, like empathetic person. I, I I like to understand things from other points of view. So I do. I want to play the game and then try and understand why is it revered? Like why is it that people like it so much? And I also want to understand why people don't like it because I feel like, especially like as time has gone on, the praise for the game has died off a bit, and there are more people coming out and saying, like, no, this game isn't really that great. If, you're, if you'll recall, Time Magazine voted it the greatest game ever made, like, two years after it was made or something. Well, there are people at Giant Bomb who think it's, like, the best game of the last generation. I will say, though, in the game's defense, I'm going to give it some historical context um, to sort of make... Like, first of all, this was during the heyday of Looter Narrative Dissonance, and pe- everyone could point to, that's a game where it works. 
Like, it makes sense for a character like Joel to be killing his way through that many people. And he is morally dubious, and they don't gloss over that. Uh, unlike and, Uncharted. Unlike Uncharted. And a lot of people were really... They, they thought that was really innovative at the time. Um, so I, I feel like The uh, Last of Us, a lot of its success, aside from just being a, a high-profile Naughty Dog game, is that it came out at the right time. Yes, and also... Right game, right time. It's it's the sort of... It was the... Like I said, it's the ultimate realization of that seventh generation cover shooter, but it's also the bedrock of every subsequent third-person cover shooter. Like they, they all basically are The Last of Us. The Last of Us took... Oh, it's the movement from La- from Uncharted. It's also the horse riding from there. The shooting. Uh, we'll need to make it a bit more sporadic. We'll take that from here. Enemy design. We'll take that from here. Oh, we need the Arkham Vision. Take that from here. It sort of pilfered all the innovations of the seventh generation into one game. And then, like, slap on top of that hashtag emotional story. Yeah, and, and so also, uh, game. also you have... Oh, we'll take the environmental storytelling from here. Is like, like I say, it's all of it sort of condensed into one game. Mm. And I would also note that I, I don't hate, I don't dislike it probably as much as Boken, but this is uh, there was this is when there was I don't the the conversation of games as art has been going on forever, but this was sort of the peak of that, if I remember correctly. And I also think a lot of the hype has to do with disappointment at the time, because it had like it was 2013, and it had been a pretty long time since there had been like a triple A game which everyone loved. Like Bioshock Infinite came out, everyone loved it for a week, and then it, everyone sort of turned their backs on it. Yeah. Grand, it's Grand Theft Auto came out, and oh my god, it's going to be this great thing. No, it's going to be a sandbox like all the other ones, and it's not going to be like an emotionally resonant game. So everyone sort of turned their backs on it. 2012, there wasn't really anything that I know. Uh, spec Ops, I guess, if you like that. But it spec is, Ops the line, I do. yeah. I mean that. If, if I mean you, spec, if you spec like Ops that. the line was not like a huge success. Like it yeah. was, it did well, but it wasn't like it some uh, huge what I'm commercial is, at the like time, bangbuster. At the time, it had been a pretty long time since we had like a AAA game that people, everyone, just loved. Uh, and The Last of Us filled that gap for a while, and it's also a game which got a lot of people into uh, better games, and got it, it sold consoles. Right? People who didn't play games played The Last of Us. That's true. And I think oh. a lot of the... That, that, I think The Last of Us, I think part, also part of its success, at least based on like what I've observed, is that it, it appeals to all different types of gamers like mm-hmm. it, it even appeals to people that don't like games like there there are people who uh who don't play video games at all but they like to watch other people play video games yes. and you know that was a great game for that um it appealed to people who maybe not as into gaming as you and i are but like are still like pretty avid gamers and they, they are you calling they found me a, a lo- gaming nerd I'm calling all three of us gaming nerds. Wow. I would also but, like, you get what I'm saying, where, like, yeah, it's you know, also another... it, it appeals to different, uh, gra- like, different spots on the gradient of, like, what people consider themselves, you know, in terms of yes. their, their gaming-ness or the, whatever the fuck you want to call mo- it. You get the, what I'm saying. Yeah, the most important one I would also note about that historical context, this was the first, I believe first real triple a game girls could play and not roll their eyes because ev- like you had uh like mm. it was like a mainstream game with a prominent girl character who wasn't just there for sex appeal yeah that's a good point like i well, think prince of persia think... sense of time yeah but prince of persia sense of time like I, that's well how, fair how far is still is like that? Farrah's design is still pretty sexy, even if her character isn't, like, overtly sexualized. Sure, but she like, was dressed up she was because a... she was, like, being... She was about to be, like, sold as a prostitute. No, yeah, I but, understand yeah, that. Ellie, Ellie you and I understand... It. You and I understand that because we've played the game. I'm saying that the perception, because just looking at her design, it's like, oh, it's just, you know, whatever. 
sexy character, you know, it's meant to make men's dicks hard. You know, that that would be the perception sure. if you don't understand the game. And that's how a lot of people kind of judge things. And I would and, say... Uh, <clears throat> and, yeah. yeah, and that's not the case with Last of Us. I would also say, and this is maybe a bit unfair, uh, and I don't want to court controversy here, I think a lot of people make apologies for its shortcomings because it broke all of those barriers for them. Sure. And like I said, I, I'm like not courting controversy here, but I'm just saying it's, it seems pretty obvious to me that that is a big factor of it. You know what my problem is? I, I'm not even sure how many quote-unquote shortcomings of the game I can actually name. There's one big one that I want to talk about, but otherwise, if I don't like... If I think the mechanics are kind of shallow and like the stealth isn't really that fleshed out, the defense would be it's not trying to be a deep game. You know? Yeah. Sure. If I complain about the, the, the Batman vision, then the the defense is, well, we want to make it accessible. Yeah. Like the game does what it wants to do, but I I just think it's so bland and the game does what it's trying to do successfully, but it doesn't really do anything for you because you've seen it all before. You've seen it all done better. Yeah. What did you think about the performances? This is Troy Baker before Troy Baker. Like, he was in everything already, but this is before people knew he was in everything. Like, this is the game I think really launched him into, like, oh, I know who Troy Baker is. This Troy is Baker uh, is not as... He's not like nowadays. He's not doing as well, I don't think. Like he isn't. He hasn't been getting as many jobs. No. I also think he's probably just gotten richer. Probably doesn't need it. But what do you think about the performances? They were good, especially Ellie. Had had a lot of range, which yes, I can appreciate. Like the the voice acting was fine. The dialogue not so much. Yeah, I would say my favorite performance was Nolan North. Spoiler alert, Daniel, No North is in the game. Wait, who did he and play? Did he, he play David the, the in, villain? Yes. Okay. In the Winter Champ chapter. I didn't I would even say notice. I, 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 uh, the Winter chapter, I would say, is pretty good. Like, from a gameplay perspective, compared to the rest of the game, Daniel, is it okay if we spoil the game for you? Yeah, I want to spoil another part, too. I don't want to be spoiled. Okay. Well, basically, uh, so yeah, Bogan, you know what I'm like, talking I, about. I do plan on playing the game. So people, people like... who are listening, they know why the winter chapter is different from the rest of the game. Uh, and I would say that juxtaposition is really good. Uh, well, really good. It's good. I like that juxtaposition. It, it made me interested in that chapter in ways I wasn't interested in other chapters. And if that's too vague for you, send your hate mail to Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come on, let me let me spoil. I mean, let me spoil a plot point here. <sighs> One that really doesn't matter that much. Run it okay, vaguely. Fine, you can run it vaguely through me. I, I'll check if it's okay. <laughs> There's, like, okay. I I also asked this question on Twitter, and people told me the game was successful, and people liked it because. Gaming has never seen such uh, three-dimensional characters. Bullshit. It's such bullshit. That's also another essay topic we should discuss at some point. Like, when did game writing become good? Ooh. Game writing has been good for a long time. People just... The problem, it got good in 2007 also a lot of with really Bioshock. Bad game writing. There is. I'm not going to argue that they're there. I would argue most games, the writing is just an excuse for the gameplay. Yeah. And that's fine. Let's do the next yeah. time. But like, yeah, that's, that's, that's a topic for another. That's time. the next topic. There was like, because, uh, Joe, I'll add it to the Google docs. Yeah. Someone you do talk. that. But the, yeah, but there's this idea that like, Oh, you know, get all gate, all games writing has been shit. And it wasn't until the last of us that we finally got like, shut the fuck up. If you're saying that shit, you don't know what you're talking about. You haven't, you haven't played shit. But that's also uh, mainstream game writing. I would say has not always been as good. I think, I think last of us also historical context, it made people aware of quality writing in ways, which 
previous games really hadn't. Even though a lot of games are vastly superior in writing to The Last of Us, Last of Us sort of showed, hey, it can be more than just, you know, it can be, I, too, it can be more may, than just I, flavor text. I might grant that The Last of Us was at least one of the first yeah, mainstream AAA I'm, I'm games. I'm not saying it's one of the. I'm. I'm saying it's. I'm not saying it's one of the first well written. I'm saying it's the one which made a lot of people outside of the hardcore gamers appreciate good writing. Sure. But also, I've been a hardcore gamer for most of my life, and I, I, I don't want to agree that uh, gaming became good after Last of Us. But I struggle to name a lot of games that had actually good writing. And characters like I, I can name a few before that, but uh... Conqueror's Bad Fur Day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, you laugh. I love, Conqueror's but that game Bad is still for pretty funny. I love that game. Anyway, the point being, like, Joel is seen as like three dimensional and morally morally dubious, as you say. And there's a point yeah. in the game where, like, his goal is to bring Ellie to a friend of his. I think it's, it's his brother, actually to his brother um, because, as it is set up in the beginning, she has been bitten by a zombie and she, did, she didn't turn. She somehow is immune and they want to, you know, produce an, a vaccine from, from her. Yes. Okay, so, that I do know about. So, and then there, there comes a point when you reach the brother um, where he wants to give Ellie to the brother so that he can bring her to some some hospital or whatever and joel wants to go back and suddenly that's the big drama where ellie's like oh you can't leave me everyone fucking leaves i hate you yeah and she stole the horses and she steals the horse and then i was so confused because at no point did i get the idea that joel was just gonna turn back and leave yeah. like that was so not set up at all, and suddenly it was this over-encompassing drama of of like ten minutes of the game. And then I realized I don't even know what the fuck Joel is like. What is his motivation? What what does he do? And that is because they skip. I, there, there's this in the in the beginning. His his daughter gets shot, right? And I think the implication. Oh well, yeah, I thought I thought the yeah I thought the idea is that Joel is. Uh, like, the, what's the girl's name? Ellie? Yes. Yeah, he's basically using her as a way to project his his feelings of his daughter, on his dead daughter onto her. Yeah, but he doesn't want to do that. I think the implication is that he has emotionally shut off. And yeah. he, he kind of feels uh, some guilt to bring Ellie, like, to, to achieve this quest, basically. But he doesn't want to get too involved with her. To, to not suffer the same fate, fate again that happened with his daughter. But because we skip the fucking 20 years after his... The moment after his daughter gets shot, I don't see yeah, him... Yeah, it does a 20 year... I don't see we, him yeah. actually reach that emotional point. They just assume we're there. And that's why I was so confused when he suddenly goes like, no, you take fucking Ellie and I'm going, I'm going to go back. After yeah. we've spent like weeks traveling, I'm gonna go back to wherever the fuck I came from. It Would you grant that maybe maybe what they were going for is he 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 wants to go with her, but he also he is fighting his own desire to replace his daughter there. Would you grant that that's what they were going for? I think I need to see Joel become the person he is. And not yeah. skip the fucking 20 years where the most important part of his character arc actually happens up until that point. <laughs> and then, you know, throw me into the world and, and just, I don't, like, that's, just that's have to bad assume. writing, right? Like, that's yeah. where the story just fails, in my opinion. Let me tell you yeah, a story. I feel, let like, me, I, let, <laughs> let me I tell feel like the more assumptions that you have to make for a character to justify their behavior... Uh, the the less well written they are. Let me That's tell you. Opinion. Let me tell you guys a story. Uh, there once was the best man in the world, and then twenty years later, he was the most evil man in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Great. No, that reminds me. That reminds me. Um, I'm gonna. Uh, I'm gonna have to show my power level a little bit. So in Tales of Z of Zillia, 
uh, it tells us Ilya. At this point. No, I swear you to know, God. You know, you could just be making up names. Tales of Chronophilia. Really wouldn't know. My favorite. So in the first, in the first Tales, Tales of, of Zillia, Abyss. <laughs> that is a game. Tales of the <laughs> Abyss. Uh, it, in Tales of Zillia, the first one. Um, I think you rec- the, recommended that one to me. The I don't know if I did. Uh, you recommended. But anyways, one. the point anyway. I'm trying to make is the villain in that game. Um, because the uh, the game was rushed, the uh, he be- the, the the final boss fight is kind of wrapped up really quickly and uh, like everything's just kind of resolved and it's it's not done very well unfortunately. Um, he he just kind of like the, the the guy he just kind of gives up and he's just like all right you beat me I I, I guess I was wrong, which it, it it they clearly had more in mind they 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 very clearly. I, for that part of the game, they even admitted it. They were like, yeah, the game is rushed. Sorry. <laughs> um, and there was clearly more that they wanted to do, but they couldn't. But the, the point I'm trying to make is, in Tales of Zillia 2, which only takes place like a year afterwards, the main villain actually joins the party, and he he's suddenly a good guy. We were and bad, I, I but think they we're want, good. And I think they wanted us to excuse the the shift as like well it's a year later so and and I, I i even heard that defense of like well it's been a year you know things changed and i'm like no 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 <laughs> fuck off if i have to make these assumptions about the character and the game and the story is not presenting me with the information necessary for me to understand why the change happened you could fuck off that's bad yeah and this is and i love these games to be clear like i think they're great games but that right there is shit uh, and that that's why it reminds me of this shit with with Joel cuz like you can't just go it's 20 years later you know just fill in the just blanks. roll with it you know you, yeah, you know all the fuck just got to roll with just it just do the work for us no yeah. fuck off that's lazy i do like Joel though i think he's he's one of the better triple a uh, protagonists of his era huh, let me take that back it's not I don't think it's fair to say it's lazy because we don't know what they were going through in development. I'm just going to say that it's it's not ideal. They, that sh- more should have been done to flesh things out. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 also I, I will say it was lazy. <laughs> okay, but you agree with me, Asa, right? That that's, yeah, yeah. I that that's agree. a fair criticism. I mean, I might be an idiot. I might not have picked up on subtle dialogue bits where, where that is explored, but I don't think... I'm I'm that dumb, and I like, I, I they, was genuinely confused when that happened. Why he would make that decision? Like you don't have to do you don't have to do flashbacks. You can just you can have the the characters, you know, through dialogue ex- say like you know you can have a character that's known Joel for a while, and they say like, hey, you know, you that's you know, every character that, you meet in the game, by the way, a character who's known Joel for a while, and they don't. <laughs> they do could it. just they could just like you know because people go on diatribes all the time. They just mention like, oh, remember this, remember that, like something could happen in the story, and then it's like, damn, Joel, that reminds me of blah blah blah, and it's like, oh, you seem different after that, you know, like whatever, just mm. just flavor text that just helps like you know build more of a clearer picture in your mind of like what happened during those 20 years yes and just we, uh, it's also part of the part that where he wants to return to boston after they've been traveling for so long and they barely survived like every five minutes and yeah he, what's he waiting for him in fucking, boston yeah like what's waiting for you everyone you know is dead why do you why do you want to go back there the game starts and everyone everything is shit he doesn't like his job. He doesn't like where he lives. He hates everyone around him. But then he wants to go Trish. back there. <laughs> Why? He should have stayed with uh, his brother. Yeah. They had a good thing. It was like everyone was friendly there. And also there's there's just no reason for Joel to not go with his brother. Like they, they can travel as two or as three. It, it makes no difference. There's nothing about this makes any sense to me. I hope you're looking forward to The Last of Us 2. Oh, I'm, I'm going to play that. I was so shocked. Just, like the, the, uh, I played the DLC of Last of Us 1, 2. And I knew there was uh, Ellie and a little other girl. And they, they kiss. Yes. That, that was back when I was on 4chan. And people like get, got really mad at that. Because it's <laughs> SJW propaganda. 
Yes. Uh, they also kissed in but the that's, new trailer. That, that was the only thing I knew about that DLC. And then I suddenly learned that the girl that is with Ellie in the Last of Us 2 trailer is not actually the girl from that. And I was No, she died. And I was totally shocked. Well, spoiler, you moron. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I think I she died. The it's DLC is DLC. really bad. It's it's so not worth playing. Like Daniel, you know, in the game yeah. you throw like Molotov cocktails and noisemakers to fight zombies. In the DLC, you're just like two girls and they're walking around an empty mall and you throw a brick through a car. Ha, isn't it fun? Yeah. You were not going to play that. I was that. so that is fucking bored experience. out of my mind. I, let, me, let me ask before we move on. Yeah, we should. Are you looking forward to Last of Us 2? No, but I'm going to play it. <laughs> okay. I guess uh, Bokken on, is just well, going to continue... To be Balkan, huh? <laughs> well, let, let, okay, let me, let me ask, like, based on what you've seen of Last of Us 2, does it look any better to you compared to the first one? Does it look more like the it same shit? It looks too edgy. I mean, even people who like Last of Us think the game looks too edgy. Mm. And that, that mm. might get really boring. The gameplay looked good, but I don't <coughs> trust that because it's a trailer and it might all be staged. Yes. So well, that's very, it's, it's very that's what happened with the, 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 the first Last of Us, where they showed like an early gameplay trailer and like a lot of that was fake. Oh, yeah. like, and then, then yeah. you actually play the game and the NPCs like Ellie just runs around standing right next to zombies and the zombies don't react. Yeah. I will say, though, Naughty Dog, they have I think they have enough credibility for me to say that that's probably what the game is going to look like. And probably what it's going to play like in an act- absolute optimal scenario, which is no scenario. Yes, pretty much. But like, I, I don't think that's necessarily false. I think they'll, they are good enough developers that I don't think they need to lie in their trailers, even though they may. But they have. Yeah, they even, already like, have. Even though you guys said they did. <laughs> they literally did. They did. They with didn't, the first game. They didn't do it for uh, Uncharted 4, though. There I'm was not stuff, sure about it. There, uh, I followed that very extensively. There was stuff in those trailers which I thought, you cannot do that in a video game. Like It is literally impossible, and they did it in the game. So, Oh, whatever. Okay. B- but, yeah. All right, let's move Daniel, on. What have you been doing? So I finished reading a book called Acid for the Children. Um, I brought it up briefly in the last episode. But, um, is this like reading, reading or audiobook reading? It's an audiobook. What the fuck is the difference? Isn't that an interesting question? No, it's not. Well, what, what's <laughs> interesting. Okay, so this book is written by Flea, the bass player for the Red Hot Chili Peppers. It's basically um, his life up until he started the Red Hot Chili Peppers. And uh, the audiobook version is actually read by Flea himself. Ooh. Just for the record, I'm going to make a Twitter poll and I'm going to ask if reading a book is the same as re- listening to an audiobook. I think you'll find that I am not going to be swayed. It's You are getting information into your head either way. Okay, please continue. So, so uh, I've also read or listened to, whatever, the audiobook version of Scar Tissue which was written by Anthony Kiedis, the lead singer of Red Hot Chili Peppers. Although, unfortunately, he didn't read his own book. He got someone else to do it. Lazy bastard. Although, but it was very interesting to kind of like, kind of compare the two. Um, Anthony's book is more straightforward, where he pretty he pretty much just like said how, said it how it was. Like, this is what happened to me. You know, this is what so-and-so said. This is what I said. And it, it, it was a, like a very general overview of, of the stuff that happened. And, you know, sprinkling in some like sp- very specific events. So Flea's book is a little more of like a stream of consciousness. In that he uses a lot of like poetic language. Um, the way that he, he describes events is like... He'll say, he'll be like very descriptive about like he, he he jumped into the water of like a a lake or something. He'll be very descriptive about 
the sensation of jumping into the water, what the 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 emotions that he felt because of the depthness and the and the darkness of of the of the lake and things like that. So because of that, it it gave the book a very unique texture. It, it, it gave it like, uh, like yeah, this was his memoir. You know, this is autobiography, but it was also a snapshot into not just his life but like his mental state of like of his emotional spectrum i guess you could say mm. and it it felt like a very personal book in a way that uh anthony's book wasn't not to say like anthony's book was very revealing right like it was still like he was very blunt and upfront about like he was like, yeah, I was kind of an asshole here and I was a piece of shit and, you know, I should have been better about this. And, uh, and, and Flea does some of that too, but like, it's personal in a way in that, like, he, he also goes into great lengths to explain, like, you know, what, where his headspace was at. And, uh, well, Anthony, you know, didn't do that as much. Um, Anthony also went over stuff that happened what, when he started the band. And he, and he talked about, like, the early days, and I think up to that point in the book, uh, when the book was made, uh, the album, by the way, had just come out, or they were about to release it, so Stadium Arcadium wasn't out yet, or they were about to work on it. So, while this book, Acid for the Children, came out 2019, yet... The book again, again, like I said, it stopped right when the band was formed. So, uh, I think Flea mentioned some interest in doing a book about his time with the band. So we might get an Acid for the Children Part Two. Who knows? Acid for um, the adults. Ah, uh, yeah, maybe. Um, he he mentioned in the book, which I thought was interesting. Uh, that a another title that he was thinking of was it sounded like a good idea at the time i think that would have been a funnier title but i think acid for the children is probably a better one but yeah i think it was i thought it was a really good book uh even if you're not like super interested in the red hot chili peppers i think it's uh worth checking out just to uh gain kind of like an appreciation for music he he talks a he talks a lot about uh, his musical inspirations, and he talks a lot about like why uh, he he doesn't get very deep or, or technical about his playing. He doesn't like go. He doesn't talk about how oh you have to play these strings or blah. blah. No, he, he he doesn't get into music theory or anything like that. He he talks about it from a very like emotional perspective. He was like he would go on about like how the germs. Uh, like shaped his musical landscape after he listened to their album GI or you know things like that and it, it does give you a really good idea of why his playing is the way it is because he he grew up with his stepfather who was a jazz musician um, he played in a punk rock band the great American um, art form jazz yes um, and uh, you know, hearing all that stuff, it it really gives you a, a good idea of like why his bass playing is the way it is. Um, but again, even if you're not a fan of Red Hot Chili Peppers, I think his life was pretty interesting. So it's just cool to just follow along, and his writing is very good. So it's just cool to just follow along and uh, hear his escapades and to to hear about like just the stuff that he went through and the mistakes he made and. Oh, I thought it was a, a neat book. Okay. Yeah. Uh, aside from that, I've been I haven't finished it yet, but I've been playing A Link Between Worlds, and uh, that game is pretty damn good. It's. I'm still wrestling with whether I like it more or less compared to A Link to the Past. I'm not sure. I probably need to replay A Link to the Past to like. To, to really be sure of which one I prefer. I definitely prefer how A Link to the Past looks. Like, the, the 2D artwork of that game is great. 
And while I do like the 3D of A Link Between Worlds, it just doesn't have the same level of charm for me compared to A Link to the Past. Yeah. Um, I will say, though, that Between Worlds has better game feel. Like, just swinging your sword in Between Worlds feels a lot better compared to swinging your sword in A Link to the Past. Um, which I thought was weird. Like, even Link's Awakening on the Game Boy, swing your sword is more fun in that game compared to A Link to the Past. There was just something not quite white right with how they, they did it in A Link to the Past. Not that it's bad, but it's just something that they got better over time, I guess. Um, what, did they speed it up or something? It's not a matter of the speed. Um, like, the... I don't know. It's hard to it's hard to put my finger on it. I would have to like really analyze it. I would have to like look over the footage and like really or like go back to the game and like really break it down to see like what it is about them that uh, makes them better compared to a Link to the Past. But um, yeah. Uh, I, I will say uh, uh, something I really appreciate about Link Between Worlds is that it leans heavier into like the Metroidvania aspects that's always been in the Zelda games, but it's always felt kind of like flavoring almost like they never go too deep into it. Yeah, it's always like, oh, you there are pillars and now you need a hammer to break down the pillars. Sure, and that's still the case in the link between worlds, but they expand upon it. Like oh. there are, because like it, by comparison, a link to the past, there might be an area here or there where like, oh yeah, you'll need the the power glove in order to lift this rock, and then you can get the flippers. And there'll be like some instances here and there where it'll be like, oh yeah, you need the hammer, and then you can get this piece of heart or something like that. But in A Link Between Worlds, you know, you still have a lot of, you have stuff like that, but they do a lot, of, a lot more of it. And they also added like secret dungeon areas or, which make it so that you have to have certain pieces of equipment to even do them. So like there's one in the dark world where you, you'll fall into this hole. I think it's one near your house where you need to have the running boots to even do it. And then it's this really challenging like um kind of obstacle course where you have to like run around up this spire until you get to the top where you get like a piece of heart or something cool and adding sometimes the 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 optional dungeons don't have much to them like in terms of a reward sometimes you'll only get like a hundred rupees and rupees and in, in zelda games are usually pretty worthless except for like uh majora's mask and breath of the wild but still, like, the fact that they added these, like, challenging dungeons, I think it really gives the game a lot more meat. Mm -hmm. um, and I also really like the mechanic where you become a painting on the wall or, like, you become a drawing on the wall. Like, that is an awesome mechanic. And they do a lot with it. Like, some of the puzzles in this game really took me by surprise. Some of them I'm, like, actually had trouble figuring out. Like... I never had problems, except for maybe a few puzzles in, in Twilight Princess, but, like, for the most part, I never had problems figuring out puzzles in a Zelda game. They're usually, like, easy peasy. Um, like, most of the puzzles in Ocarina of Time are fucking pathetic. Uh, most of the puzzles, even in A Link to the Past, are not, like, brain teasers. You but can't, you, uh, can't, you can't laugh at me, Daniel, but uh, that final dungeon in ocarina of time where they had flips upside down i was stuck on that for a while okay i'll grant you that yeah most of the zelda the, puzzles uh, kind of boil down to go to the rooms you haven't visited yet yeah that is true i i will grant you that like there were some puzzles in like the final dungeon in ocarina of time those those were kind of tricky i'll grant you that but like what i'm saying is in in a link between worlds it's like that for the whole game like Ooh. Like, maybe not in some of the light world dungeons. Those are not that difficult. But in the dark world dungeons especially, they can get uh, they can get pretty tough. And, it can, and, and also especially in the optional dungeons, 
you know, it can be difficult to figure out like what the what the game wants you to do. And I, I was it was so refreshing to have puzzles in a Zelda game that actually like really engaged me and really challenged me. And I was just like moments where I'm just like, oh, what the what the fuck does the game want me to do? I don't get it. So yeah. Uh I'm I'm um, I'm half expecting a link between worlds by the end of it to become my favorite Zelda game. It's high praise. It's honestly that good. Like it's shocking how good this game is. And I thought for, I thought a link be a link to the past would always be my favorite Zelda game. I thought there's no way anything could ever topple it. But this is the first time where I, where I felt like it's had some like some stiff competition. What a fantastic game this is! Like easily, even if it if it doesn't overthrow a Link to the Past for me, probably half due to nostalgia, it will at the very least be my second favorite. Like this is w- without a doubt one of the best Zelda games ever made. I'm not even done with it yet, and I feel really confident saying that. It is unless the game turns a complete shit afterwards. I'm pretty <laughs> confident, which I you know I don't suspect that to happen. Like I'm pretty confident saying like hands down. One of the best Zelda games. If you're a Zelda fan, you really need to pick it up. It's fantastic. Well, All right. Guess I need to play it. Oh well, I break. I wait. I break my yeah. 3ds. Because I'm not playing it. Well, you don't have a 3ds. Know. No, I had one, and then I tried to hack it, and now it's dead. Uh, you could probably emulate it if you're. Uh... Oh, I don't know about that. No, I'm, I'm just saying, I'm just throwing hack, out an option. You'll hack your 3DS, but you won't emulate it. <laughs> I don't trust 3DS <laughs> emulation. I know Citra exists, no. but yeah. You'll just... I, I mean, it's. I was just throwing it out as an option. All right, well, we're going to take a quick break before our uh, essay question. So we'll be yes. right back, everyone. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, it's time to uh, brew some espresso, which Acer has already done twice, apparently. No, I did it once. I just made two cups. Oh, okay. You drink entire cups of espresso? No, cappuccinos. Anyways, time to brew some espresso <laughs> and to address the essay topic... <laughs> Which is, why is there resistance towards media critics? So, Boken, this was your topic, so why don't you lead us on? It was. Um, I guess I could also ask the question if you guys agree that there is resistance towards media critics. Are we victims uh, for certain, of society? For certain people. <laughs> we live in the society. I was going to say, I didn't quite hear you, and I was really hoping you said that. <laughs> You, uh, you cut out there. I didn't get that. Oh, it doesn't matter. It's uh, nothing. <laughs> we, uh, we do, we uh, do, in fact, live in a society. That's the takeaway. Yes, we do. Um, I will say yes to an extent. Sauce, society. Um, I feel that a lot of people... Um, a lot of people don't like looking up what critics say, or they don't like looking up reviews, because... They have, they already have their opinion on something and they don't want it to be challenged. So they'll ignore reviews. They'll ignore what critics have to say. And they'll just be like, no, this is my opinion. So I, I don't want you to, I don't want you to like ex- expose me to flaws I didn't consider. And now I have to change my opinion. I don't want to go through that. Yeah, so pretty the- much. The reason why I brought up this topic was I had an interaction with a coworker of mine where recently Star Trek Picard, the TV show, started. and um, Well, that's great, right? I hear wonderful things. Let's not, <laughs> let's not go there. <laughs> but um, after the first episode aired, uh, Red Letter Media made a like 45-minute discussion on just the first episode. And I knew 
I mean, I watched it. I watched the Red Letter Media Review. And I know my coworker watch, watches the show. And I just posted that video to him and said, you know, you, you don't really get where I come from with, with Star Trek. Here's a bunch of reasons. Like these guys lay out pretty well why I hate the new Star Trek style. And he went, I, t I don't want to watch that because I don't care what other people think. Or, like, they, they, we then had this discussion where he, he said, like, I don't want other people to influence my opinion. Like, if I enjoy something, I don't want someone else to tell me why I shouldn't enjoy it. And all these weird reasons. I mm. mean, the weirdest thing about it is, it is that he doesn't even like Picard. He, <laughs> he dislikes the show as well. But he still doesn't want to hear other people's viewpoints on it. Because they I might change his outlook. I don't think that's unreasonable, though. He's right. He's it's well within his right to have his own opinion, right? Y yes, but watching a review does not change. Need, does not need to change his opinion. Yeah, but maybe he just doesn't care. Maybe it's like I know what I like. Yeah, and that's that's the the part I want to talk about. Like, I mean, we all go out of our way to listen to other people's opinions, right? We, we are interested in the discourse of what other people have to say about something. I, I have sat, yes, I have sat through very long videos of people espousing opinions that I completely disagreed with. Are you like, talking about my Silent Hill commentaries? <laughs> no, no, those are great. And, I, and I, I mostly agree with almost everything you said in those videos. What didn't um, you agree with? I can't, I can't think of anything at the top of my head. Uh, but the, po the point is, like, yeah, whether I was, uh, whether they were bashing something I liked or uh, praising something I disliked, I've seen, yeah, plenty of videos of people espousing the literal opposite opinion that I have. And uh, there are times where I would go like, you know what, uh, a good point was made here. This makes me see things a little differently, um, or uh, I maybe uh, like if there's something I really disliked. Like I saw a Code Geass video that made me appreciate the chess scene a little bit more, um, and the video was pretty fair. It was basically saying like, yeah, in terms of chess rules, this is just breaking the rules, and that could be really uh, that could be very immersion breaking because it, you know this is not how chess works. Uh, but the argument he was trying to put forth is, but in in doing so, in by breaking the rules, the the show is doing something that's a little more thematically significant. In that, uh, this this shows the personality of the characters in a really interesting way. Uh, and and he goes into more detail about other things uh, about that uh, chess sequence. And when I when I first saw that chess sequence in Code Geass, I thought it was shit. I was like, this is not how chess works. This is stupid. You know, fuck this. Uh, but when I saw the video, I was like, you know what? I still think it's a bad scene. I don't like it. But I can at least appreciate what they were trying to go for. And I can, uh, and, and, beca and because of this video offering me a different perspective, I was able to appreciate that scene more in a way that I couldn't before. I would like to just hang on something you said there. You don't, you didn't like that scene? You didn't like Code Geass? <laughs> Shut up, Acer. <laughs> But yeah, the, that's but, like yeah. The, the difference, right? I mean, there are people I really respect yeah. who I think are much smarter than me who will tell me with a straight face that Code Gears is a good show. <laughs> and they're not on this podcast. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, way to preempt that. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the point being that I would go out of my way to have a discussion with them, right? Because I, I'm the, I know those are ref people who reflect on their own opinions and they could probably uh, tell me something that I didn't know or that I didn't consider before. Or maybe we might reach some kind of understanding. Why do you think it is that people are resistant to re-exploring ideas like that? I don't think people want to be proven wrong there's like something innate within us that we 
hate being proven wrong. We just, it, it gives us a bad feeling. Yes. I, I saw that earlier when you guys were talking about Anna Rolando. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> With your garbage opinions. Yeah, it's, it's part of being like too proud to admit that you're wrong or that there might be more but, to see, a I, certain opinion than just yours. I, I would say mm-hmm. that, though, I don't want to use the word wrong because you're not wrong to like something that somebody else dislikes. I would say it's the perception of being scolded more than being told that you're wrong. Like It, it mm. feels like somebody is... Attack, looking down on you. Yeah, looking down on you, attacking you. There's like it, it it there's an air of elitism which they see around it and that's sort of what turns them off, I would say. That's pa- yeah, because pa- it, because for some people. Yes. Because it, it 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 isn't that you're wrong. Nope, like Code Geass yeah, is a I, great I, show. Yeah, I, I was being agree. a bit general there. We all agree that Code Geass is a great show, but you're not wrong <laughs> to dislike it. You're a fool, but you're not wrong. <laughs> but um, if, if you don't care about reviews it's your your basic like assumption is what the where the fuck does this reviewer get off telling me what he thinks like having having this this air of, of just knowing better how i should feel about something than i do myself right even though that's clearly not what yeah. a review is supposed to do or what most reviewers do like they just provide an opinion, and in the case of a, a review, give you a recommendation if you might like it or not. I but I do think there are some reviewers, whether it's intentional, whether it's a, a character that the that the person is doing. There is elitism. There is people that look down on others for liking something that they perceive to be shit, like. I, I, I tried to avoid that during the Code Geass discussion, but clearly it failed because we still got a bunch of dislikes on that video, which is fine, you know, whatever. I'm not angry about it or anything. But that's always uh, the engagement. But clearly people didn't like that we were talking bad about the show, and it's probably because they perceived our dislike of the show as a sort of like looking down on others for thinking that it's good. That wasn't our intention, but there's just some there's like a a natural part of criticizing something that it, it comes with it this air of like uh you know if you disagree then there's clearly something wrong with you even if that may not be the implication that can be that can certainly be taken from it yes i think there's also a part of it is that um there are different levels of liking a piece of media like Bach and Lady Gaga like Bach is better than Lady Gaga clearly but <laughs> okay but to to like sure. to like a non-initiated person that distinction isn't necessarily obvious but if you if you enjoy music theory if you're like really deep into it then like you're going to get a lot more out of Beethoven than you're going to get out of Little Wayne and that's, when, that's such a weird comparison. Yeah, I, this is I, a I know, weird I know, comparison. I'm, I'm, Stella piano yeah, sure, player. but I'm, I'm, I'm bringing it back. I'm saying there, when there is a con- perception that there is a right way to enjoy something and a wrong way, and when the reviewer says something like, "Well, cinematography here is really stellar. The blocking of the actors is really good. It really conveys the subtext of what they're going for here." Blah blah blah. If you're not versed enough in the sort of language of cinema, that doesn't say anything to you. Sure. But that's and, that's where also you could see your entry into that. I mean, my entry into mm-hmm. this style of of, uh, of critique, especially for movies, was with the Plinkett Star Wars reviews, where he like looks at the first scene of, of uh, the last, no, not the A New Hope, you know, where the, the little rebel ca- craft is, is followed by, by the big the Imperial ship. Four. And then Plinkett explains like, okay, you see it from a downward angle, which implies dominance. And the wide range of the Imperial ship 
implies the wide range of the imperial yeah, of the empire itself and you see it how takes all the frame and yeah that sort of miscommunication between levels of enjoying something i think can be attributed to a lot of these sort of disregard for critique uh, critics media criticisms you need to have an interest in diving deeper into media which i think a lot of people don't yeah. For some people, it's just, I want to enjoy this and I don't want to listen to people who are going to make me not enjoy this. I mean, that's my co-worker admitted as much. Which is, that is fine. What I find weird about it is, I guess it's not that weird, but we, we both work in politics, right? He would never ever fucking go, I have my political opinion and I'm not going to listen to people who make me dislike my own political opinion because I want to keep liking it. That's, you know, that's his fucking job. He needs to listen yeah. to other people and he needs to understand how, how political opinions are formed and why they are formed. So he would never go... Sure. He would never say that in that area. But when it comes to just media, he doesn't care. Oh, that's well, rough. Well, I mean, one is his job, one is his hobby. Like... Well... He doesn't need one to engage with them the same way. One is way. also my hobby. Right, but he doesn't need to engage with it the same way you do. He doesn't need to engage with his with his job the same way he engages with his hobby. True. I wonder if there are other areas where I just don't care, but I usually try to like read up on stuff that I want to to understand. Like I don't think I ever have this this mental blockade. I mean, when it comes to music, I don't care what other people say. Huh. Like, I I know what I like, and but you know, I I do. But the thing is, I do listen to other opinions. Like, I I watch Anthony Fantano, yeah, I mean, you the Needle just Drop. Listen to reviews. Sure, but like, I I never had a I've never had someone change my opinion on music before because I don't know. I just I I've I've heard other opinions and I've. If I change my mind, it's usually just because I naturally just decided to. Well, music reviews are special anyway. I've, I, I don't really listen to music reviews because I think music is extremely subjective. Yeah, but everything is subjective. Well, but, but not to well, that degree. Uh, uh, music is uh, really, well. you, it's, it's kind of hard to fuck up music. Like you follow a bunch of basic rules and you you make a basic song and it's gonna listen it's, it's gonna sound okay yeah. i don't know mersbow is pretty shitty <laughs> what <laughs> mersbow i think the only the only albums that I, where I would consider them to be actually bad is where a band i already have some opinion on like disappointed that opinion or that, that expectation yeah. Like when they went into a direction that I don't care about or when the songs mean, weren't as complex as they used to. You mean like when Metallica cut their hair and called themselves like alternative rock or whatever? Yeah, for example. I mean, not that specific band, but that kind of like change, yes. But even then, you're like, you want them to experiment a bit. But it's difficult to say pop music is bad or whatever the fuck is in the current top no, 20. No, it's very easy. Pop music can fuck off. Yeah, it can fuck off, but you can't <laughs> you can't say that it's bad music. I fucking yes, hate I autotune uh, vocals, but I can't say that they're bad. Why not? Because I just I don't like them. Uh, yeah, I think they do a bad job of communicating because they always take me out of the song. <laughs> Ergo, they're well, bad. That's kind of your problem <laughs> that's not the same as saying you know the last of us has a writing flaw because it doesn't show vital character development it's a different no, but it's pre area well i guess well, i mean it is, it is an issue w whether you consider it a flaw whether you consider it a flaw or not though it's still your opinion i well i'm not sure i can go that far uh, I think yes. <laughs> when we both agree on, on certain principles of what good writing is and what bad writing is, I think 
I can make a very convincing case that this that that is yeah, a flaw. Yeah, you, you can be very you can be very convincing that it's a yeah. flaw, but it's still your. Well, but obviously, that it's it's, a flaw. it's always going to be subjective. But if if we're both rational adults, we can, we should reach an understanding there that intersubjectively, we both agree to that point. Yeah, sure. but I think you can still make the argument, like I said earlier, that Lil Wayne is not a good musician, right? I, we can just put like Elvis I Presley. Mean, I don't listen to Lil Wayne, no, but, so but I'm I, saying I'm not, Elvis Presley. I'm not going to make that claim. Elvis Presley is musically superior to to Drake, to Snoop Dogg, let's say. Elvis Presley has an understanding. I mean, understanding. that's your opinion. Yeah, but no, but see, if if you have a framework for how this is supposed to work, if you can if you can tell the difference between good cinematography and bad cinematography, and you can make the argument that it's not just preference, then surely you should be able to do the same for music. Mm, I, I'm not sure not, because n- not really. Yeah, your music argument but is it's, one of taste and genre, while my example with the writing flaw, ex- like it, it goes. Two other genres too. Okay, here, I but, think a big difference uh, that you're trying we, to say. What if it. we just? It, what if the music was the same genre? Like you have good pop music and you can have bad pop music. I think what Boken is trying to say is, it's easier in other media like film to make a convincing argument as to why something is well done or poorly done compared to music uh yeah maybe but people are very people are becoming very um linguistically capable of expressing cinematic language like a, a normal person knows what cinematography is for some reason i don't think they do actually a normal person yeah. i in i meet they get it your mileage may of course vary but uh there, I, I feel like maybe it's just the presentation. It's easier to watch a video about a guy critiquing a movie than a guy com- critiquing a song because you have that visual information in your face and it's just more access. Like film criticism is by its very design more accessible than music criticism. I have Does another, that make sense? I have another theory. I think when I talk about a flaw in writing in a film, it makes that film less functional. Whereas less functional music would be when it's like d- discordant and and <laughs> not harmonic, which can also be good in a way, but yeah, when, when it, it, when it doesn't be... sound good and it's really hard to create music that doesn't at least sound good and is functional in structure. That just doesn't, yeah, but it, it can, doesn't happen. It can also it can also just be a guy <laughs> talking. Just listen to Mersbow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it can also just be a guy like rapping about how he fucks bitches for four minutes. Yeah, like that's bad music. No, it's not. I listen to that no. stuff all the time. <laughs> uh. Uh. Like that's not bad music. That's just a genre you don't like. Yeah, for, talking exactly. Talk, t- no, that's not a genre. Excuse me. Talking about fucking bitches is not a genre. That is no. That can be in any genre. You can. There is good rap. You can, there is you good can have hip-hop. a classical. You can have a classical song that's talking about fucking bitches if you wanted. You to. can also yeah. have good rap, which is about fucking bitches. Yeah. Well, yes. uh, yeah, you can. But overwhelmingly, I would say that's not the case. Why? You can't. Because most of it is just these ego-driven idiots who don't know anything about anything, talking about how bad they are, talking about how sexually exploitative they are, so? and there is no and there is no substance to it. If the beat is good and the rapper is good and any, he has good flow any, and he has good rhymes, then it's good but see, rap. But see, then then you're just saying, well, good rap is just rhyme, but. The beat is just a beat. Anybody can make a beat. There's no, there's no skill attached to that. If you just have a beat, uh, that's not true. No, 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 there no, is, no. That's there, not there, true. I'm saying, hold on. There is a skill to making good beats, but any human being can make a beat. That's, but that's what I'm saying about music in general. It's very hard. Any to human make bad can pick music. up. <laughs> any human can pick up a guitar and learn how to play the guitar. It's hard, yeah, but you can do it. That, that's, that's, not it's a, not, that's not. That's not a good qualifier. No, but that's not what I said. There's a difference because you need skill to play a guitar. It does not take skill to make a beat. 
there are skillful but you can be very skillful at it but anybody can go dun 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 you can anybody can make a beat there's no there's no entry level there's no barrier to it sure but like just because anyone can do like anybody can run but like not everyone can be an olympian that that, I know. that could run like you know 10 miles without breaking a sweat like yeah just because everyone could do it, that doesn't mean anything. No, th- that I, I'm not saying. I'm, uh, hold on, I'm saying it's not enough to just have a beat and have rhymes about fucking bitches. There is something more you need to do. There has to be some substance substance to it. Okay. Yes, that's what I'm saying. You were di- you guys were disagreeing with me over this. You said it was you. Uh, no, you're but you're being you're you're being. Very general and dismissive, yeah. saying that like. Whoa, he's being dismissive. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, let me tell you what they're on a laundry right now. <laughs> like there are plenty of good rap songs that are about fucking bitches. Yes, like, but again, the overwhelming majority just isn't. No. The pare- the the yes, the Pareto principle is just going to work against you here. The overwhelming majority of anything is not good. Okay. Are, are you trying to invoke Sturgeon's law? No, I'm talking about the Pareto principle. Anything Sturgeon, that that's it. okay. The old, like like I said, there has to be a difference in quality. Otherwise, the very idea of media criticism falls flat on its face, and everything is just subjective. And we can make we can make that argument if you want, but then you can't really critique somebody for disapproach for not liking criticism. When if you if you're gonna make the argument that everything is subjective, then you you really can't be offended that somebody doesn't want media criticism. And if you're not gonna well, it, no one here is saying everything is subjective. Okay, but then there has to be a quality difference in even in music. So I I don't see why you guys seem to think that music is any different. I think the bar. Yeah, I mean, okay, when you put it laid out like, like that, I agree. I think. The bar in music is so low for what most people want out of it that you saying something is bad is just like it's not really pointing out flaws because okay, but people don't care usually, that's usually, what they want. Usually when people say something's good or bad, it's usually just based on their standards. Yeah, okay. Bad. There, there, there's no, there is no objective barometer of what quality is. Like, there's no universal law that says, like, this is good quality and this is bad quality. That's not, that doesn't exist. Well, if when we say, when we say this is good or this is bad, that's just that person's individual perception of what that means. And if someone else disagrees, then that's a conflict of their standards. Okay, but then it doesn't matter that people have, the people would uh, have be, What's the way we phrase the essay question? It doesn't matter if people are sort of against media criticism. Because if everything... We're not just... saying it matters. No, okay. We're just asking about it. We're saying, like, <laughs> why, why is this the case? Like, you know, See, I'm we're not... trying to just get into that mindset. I'm not willing to agree with you that it's all subjective. I think I, think... I didn't say it was all subjective. Yeah, <laughs> like, we, we live in an objective reality. You can you can objectively reference a work. You can you can point clearly point out and say like yes, Final Fantasy VII is a video game on the PlayStation One that uses pre-rendered backgrounds. That's all objectively true. Yeah. But how you feel about those particular elements is subjective. Okay, but media criticism is not about how you feel. Cinematography, it's not. Oh, I feel like this is good cinematography. There's a craft to it. Like there is there's there is good blocking from actors and there is bad blocking. There is good acting, there is bad acting. Oh, I there don't is know about a... that. Oh no no no. Uh, oh. No. No no. <laughs> there is I've watched Uncut Gems the other day and I fucking hated the blocking and the, the pacing and the dialogue and I'm pretty sure other people like it. Okay, but how, how about this? You have a camera that is zoomed in way too much and it just moves from side to side. It doesn't communicate anything. All of the actors are in flat lighting. You just put the worst possible nothing craft into the movie. Compare that to Citizen Kane. Yeah, sure. There is 
there, there is a quantity. No, I hate, I a- hate these kinds of examples because it's always the most like extreme, like, oh yes, let's compare Godfather to the room. Like, obviously <laughs> this means there's objective quality. No, yeah, shut but up. It, That's such but, a shitty argument. No, like how, how though, if, if, if there is any difference at all, you have to be able to point out to it. There is a difference between good cinematography and bad cinematography. I think there's a difference between functional and non-functional cinematography. Sure, but that would be good and bad cinematography. If it doesn't well, perform it, that's that's sort of Aristotelian, though. I, I don't know, like it is. It is as good as it performs its function. But whether you think it's good or not is just how you want to see it, like. There, you can't like we we differentiate between like different carats of gold right like you know there's six there's eight carat gold six carat gold but we just dis- we arbitrarily decide which one is more valuable or not but in terms of objective reality they're just sh- shiny gold rocks like the, the what we consider to be good or bad it's just our arbitrary distinctions that we as humans just just decided to come up with Okay, so earlier when we were talking about, we were all dunking on Last of Us just jumping over 20 years. That, like, that is not an objectively bad move to make, you don't think? No. No, no it's not. No, it's not objectively bad. See, it is, it is, it's bad by my standards. I'm not, I, I think it's I bad. Know. I don't think, I don't think everything about this is objective. There's, uh, there's room for subjectivity. But there have to be objective standards which people can latch on. I think there the are, problem is there, that we're, no. you know, we, we're making a, a dichotomy between objective and subjective, which is a problem. Because as I argued earlier, I think if you take a few uh, assumptions of what we think, how we value certain things, and that we can both agree to you know, some basics of storytelling, for example, of how something should be done to be functional, then we can both come to to the the idea that yes that moment in last of us was not well written and you can disagree yeah we we all but agree i think i can make a very convincing case and if you're a rational human being you at least see my case if not agree with it and that's that's like that's not objective sure. but that's strong intersubjectivity okay but it, it, there there sure. are there are objective ways to structure a narrative better no, yes, there isn't. Yes, there are. The human brain, Daniel, is not like just this pus of nothing. It has structure to it, and some presentation just works better. If you want the story to be memorable, there are better ways to pace it than the worst way. The worst ways. But then you you can always find some example of how something made someone feel, and then he connects it to what the movie was trying to do. You know, like when when a movie jumps around. Or when when it is very slow and then you think it's boring, he thinks it's just you know he can he is left alone with his thoughts and that's so thematic of what it was trying like, to do. Yeah, there, I can't there's count. always there's always room for subjectivity. <laughs> yeah, but that's I hideous. can't count how many times where I thought something was great or something was shit, and then someone came around came along and was like, "Well, I feel the opposite," and then presented like. A, you know, a pretty convincing counter argument. And, and I went like, well, I don't really agree with what you're saying, but I could definitely see where you're coming from because there, that's, there, there, there's room for interpretation. There's room for people to f- feel different ways about something and it being valid. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not saying that you're wrong for liking something that is unconventionally portrayed. I'm saying there is a difference in quality between something that is good, Citizen Kane, and like the room, and I know they're they the, the aspirate like even those. That what, is if, a, what if you want to view the room as a yeah. comedy? Then the room is like one of the best movies like, no, ever but, made. But hold on, movie. but hold on, no, 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 you can't do that, Tommy. Wiseau, yes, you can. No, you, you can, but that's not a fair way to critique it. Tommy Wiseau was not making a comedy. This was supposed that's to true. be his Citizen Kane. But there are plenty. There are plenty of movies that weren't intended to convey a certain message, but people took that message from it anyways, and they felt that it added to the experience regardless. Yeah, sure, but going uh, going back to what I said, you can you can make an objective statement of fact that Citizen Kane 
reached its aspirations better than the room reached its aspirations. No, that's not an yeah, objective you, statement. You, yes, you can. No. They had the same aspiration to be Citizen Kane. One of them succeeded, I don't, the other I don't one think didn't. the room was intending to be Citizen Kane. Tommy Wiseau said as much. You can okay. make you can make the so it is they are as, the same aspiration. One of them succeeded, the other one didn't. Whether you consider it a success or not in that aspiration is still subjective. Obviously, I would agree that it failed because I'm a reasonable human being. <laughs> but that doesn't make it an objective state. Once you you can't you cannot add subjective qualifiers to objective statements because then it's not objective anymore i hate it they're, whenever they're, pe- I'm not- i hate it whenever people try to say like like i'm being objective blah 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 and then they're saying this is good this is bad this is poor this is well made you know this is great you're not being objective you there's can, nothing objective you, you about can't, that you can't be objective in the proper context so uh we love to talk about Dark Souls. Dark Souls, as like a funny game, is objectively a failure. Pretty much. Like it, no, you could, you could, could okay, you cannot, no, hold, you no, cannot bring on, comedy no, into this, Daniel. Please, <laughs> I'm saying there are there are objective ways. Like the, the presentation of Dark Souls, it just there are objective failures with the presentation for it to be a good comedy game. Compared to this other comedy game, whose mechanics are better tweaked towards that, surely. Again, I could agree with you, but it's not objective. I would probably, I, I, I guarantee that I would agree with you. That you know it what fails I, you know as what a I just comedy realized? game. This but isn't even the essay topic. <laughs> it's not. We totally <laughs> we went off the rails. That's correct. <laughs> totally went off the rails. Uh But this is an interesting question, though. People have these disagreements, these disagreements. I wonder how much this plays into their sort of holy crap. What is the word you used? Intersubjectivity. Resistance. No oh. resistance. I I wonder how much this plays to the resistance of media criticism. Just the basic fact that they disagree about this. Oh, p- what we're doing right now is nothing new. Like there are. There are so many digressions in discussion that devolve into just arguments of subjectivity yeah, versus objectivity. Really yeah. But like, yeah. I think we as as people who value media criticism and seek it out, I think we are also kind of on the quest to at least partially find those objective uh, objective descriptions of what makes something good or bad, right? Which is not to say that they're really there. I think the, the the discussion just breaks down because, yeah, you can say fucking the room is terrible and it's objectively not as good as Citizen Kane. But what the... F- like, that's not a discussion. That's that's nothing. That doesn't it tell always, anyone uh, anything. Sub- and ab- subjective... The subjective, objective conversation, it always reaches infinite regress where people just drag it further and further back until people aren't even talking together anymore. Yeah, because there's so much in the middle there where it becomes very blurry and very gray that you can never reach a consensus there. Yeah. Yeah, not, but but no, we are interested I f- I in, feel in like trying it, yeah. to understand why people think what they think and trying to, to understand if you can get some kind of measurement out of that. And maybe, you know, quote-unquote normal people just don't care about that. They don't care about the language. They don't care about the entire movement of criticism. They just want to watch something and enjoy it. Yeah, like the the way that we consume media is vastly different from how the normal person does it. Normal people will just watch a movie and they'll be like, I enjoyed that and they'll forget yeah. about it. And it's so weird. Or, like, you know, I have friends who, who fucking binge Netflix all day long and I've never heard them talk yeah. about what they actually like or dislike about a show. Like they don't even tell you I watched this and, and you know, that character was good or that scene was bad. It's just they watch it and then they move on with their lives. That's really... They, they, cons- they think about it in a different way to us because what, what we, is it just we try to derive like meaning from yeah. it. What? 
I'm wondering, like, if you just binge Netflix, uh, the people you were talking about, is it just raw consumption? It's just I have time and I don't have focus, and I need to dis- I need to er- I need to spend this time on something. I can't be alone with my thoughts. Maybe I wonder does that does that human I, being yeah, do those human because... beings do they yeah. exist those human beings who just have no filter for quality or preferences at all no no they, just they will watch? also sometimes think I dislike this show but I don't think they go much deeper than that they don't really explore their gut feelings. I mean, I've seen someone give High School DxD, which is like one of the worst animes I've seen, like a ten out of ten. That's so, the yes, that's the boob show, right? Yes, that is the boob show. So yes, there are <laughs> there are people that just they they are there for like the shallowest of reasons, and that for them that's good enough. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not no, trying to like not. cast aspersions on it. Like, enjoy your titty show. Give it a ten out of ten. It's good for you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I thought it was shit, but if you if you enjoyed it, it's go for it. Just a very different mindset from for, from for the record. Like, and, yeah, there's yeah. There, and there's nothing wrong with just watching a Netflix show, like binging a uh, hundred episodes or whatever, and not putting any thought to it. Like it, it, that's, it, if that's if that's what you want to do, and you that's how you want to spend your time, like go for it. But yeah. like for us, that's just we just don't operate like that. It's uh, for the record, Daniel. Earlier, I I was not make. I do not believe you can do like a 10 out of 10 objectivity scale of quality. That I may not have communicated that properly, but I was not... I don't know where you stand anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, my, my standard was that insofar as you can make a statement of the thing's quality, whether it be, say, Monster, you can say Monster is a psychological drama. And then you yes. can extrapolate from that, well, it's a good psychological drama. I mean, I agree. And that, I agree. That, you, that, you, that can be an objective I, statement. of. Fact. I agree that it's a good psychological drama, but that's still just our opinion. We, you can't say it's an objectively good yeah, psychological I agree drama. With Asa I think in, you can. I agree with Asa in, no, in the sense no, 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 no. that there needs to be some kind of way where we can both reach an understanding of, yes, this show works and it is good. We can reach an understanding, but... Just because we understand each other, that doesn't make anything that we're saying objective. You know, just fucking throw the word objective out the window. <laughs> yeah, fu- I fucking hate that the word. The word objective <laughs> is probably not even the right one to use in that context, but it's the best one we have. That, that, that's why I use standards instead. Like I, I, I think it, it gets across better what we're trying to say. Like it's, it's not a matter of like, this is fact you can't argue with me it's good fuck you what you think no it's just a matter of like my these are our standards this is what we think qualifies as good and bad there needs to be a framework that we can both agree on or else we can't have a discussion about anything yeah and just we're gonna we're gonna have to move away from this part of the conversation i think there can be some objectivity to the framework i don't think you do you guys do though no, I, I think I agree. Uh, I think there can be objectivity, but I, it's just... I think we don't have the vocabulary to talk about it. Frankly. Yeah, probably. Anyway. Anyway, it's a weird mindset, not wanting to dive deeper into shit. It's hard to understand. It's I, I realize this yeah. when, like currently on Twitter, I sometimes observe the, the hashtags for Picard and for Darwin, Darwin's game, which... Like, I see a lot of people praising those shows, but there's never anything substantial there. There's never, like, I like this show because X, Y, and Z. It's just, wow, what a great show. Like, it's so much fun. And I think it is because people just don't, a lot of people just don't look as deep into it. It's just, they watch it and they go, I like this, and then that's their opinion. And that's it. They move on with their day. And that's it. Imagine, Which is fine. imagine consuming media and then not spending tens of hours making videos about why you enjoyed it. <laughs> right? <laughs> Losers. There are people who, who watch so much Netflix, <laughs> but they wouldn't call it their hobby. Well, I would totally call it my hobby because, you know, like being a critic is a hobby. Yeah. I think I think there might be some stigma around the word hobby, like because it, it brings up images of like, People that are like obsessed and people that are 
uh, they're into they're they're way too deep into it and. You know, you're talking it, about like fantasy football types, or are you talking about like anime waifu pillow types? Both. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure it, people when they think of like those that are like really into a hobby, that's that's what they think of. Mm-hmm. But you know, I don't see why that's a bad thing. I mean, sure, you could take things too far. You can take anything too far. But like, I I'd rather be. Like really passionate about something than passionate about fucking nothing. I'd rather be too passionate about something than to be this apathetic thing that just like exists. Like fuck. You don't that. want to be the the Tinder profile that says, "I like to go out into nature and my hobbies are my friends." <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag Gilka. <Fuck. laughs> yeah, fuck that. I like traveling. What do you? Yeah, I like travel. I like music. Yeah, you're 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 what, assumably a human being. What kind so of music you do you like? Would. Well, everything. I listen to the radio. And yeah, oh, and yeah. <laughs> yeah, I hate those that nothing personality is like. Get out of here with that. We're not. Shit. We're not. Th- this is not a dunk on post mesmeric. He literally listens to everything. No, we're not. No, <laughs> to, no post mesmeric. <laughs> <laughs> he he had this. No, he last no he time. doesn't. No, but like it, Alex. In Alex's defense, like yeah, he likes to listen to everything, but like he has deep thoughts about yeah, everything he listens like, to. That's yeah. different. I was not thinking of him. Like, You're talking about he, just this sort of vapid, fly on the wall during as their life passes by them. Doesn't but develop that's also, a that's personality. That's so unfair to say. Like I think most people are yeah, more sure. reflective of themselves than that, but they just don't. You know, they don't have don't that re- much don't talk that much expectation it. of their media. Yeah. Sure. You know, not every not everyone needs to like be obsessed with media like we are. Everyone everyone has a thing. I'm I'm not saying people need to be obsessed with media. I'm saying like I I just think it's important for people to be passionate about something. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, what do you what do you do? What do you have? Like, yeah, what, like well, if you don't have anything you care about, then and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> probably some money. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, a bunch of friends that you, you don't even know what they're like. Uh, <laughs> you just say hi to them at work, and you know you say like, "Oh, the weather's nice." Like, fuck that. Uh, oh yeah, did you see the weather? I don't want to fucking talk to you about the goddamn weather. Why would anybody want to talk oh, about the weather? Oh, it was raining a lot today. Yeah, oh, I noticed. I, I live in the world just like you. <laughs> it's pretty bad weather uh, last Friday, though. <laughs> Okay, uh, this this really went, <laughs> really went off the rails. Uh, do we want to like? Th- does anyone have anything to say before we stop? Uh, I think we we found a good reincorporation at the end. Yeah. Okay. It's okay to not. It's no. It's okay for everybody not to agree on everything, but also it's okay to have the conversation. You can check things out, and if you don't, then you're just one of the mouth breathing masses. Please, my last word is: please don't think reviewers are looking down to, down on you. Please don't take. Oh, yeah. I mean, don't take a review some as an of, some of them are. on something you like or on your opinion. Let, let let's qualify. Some of them are, but we're not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, that's actually something we didn't quite get into. I would. Say, there's a lot of uh, critiques which are just ego trips for people. Like, and uh, you yeah. should stay away from those. Sure. And the uh, uh, final thing I'm going to say, I guess, is uh, stop using the words objectivity and subjectivity. <laughs> uh, which I know is incredibly ironic given the discussion we just had. But I wonder, if, more I th- I wonder if you can even cut that out of the episode. I think it's so too deeply no, entrenched. I'm not gonna. <laughs> No, it's no. It's I'm not so gonna do work. that. Fuck that. Uh, I apologize no. to everybody who has to wa- listen to. <laughs> to that. Like, my advice: spend less time arguing about that shit. Spend more time actually talking about whatever media it is that uh, inspired that discussion in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you should listen to a podcast with a bit more professionality, eh? What are you talking about? This is the most professional of podcasts. That's true. Other podcasts wish 
wish they had a tenth of our professionalism. That is true. They do wish that. All of them. Didn't somebody on Twitter go that this say tell you that this was their favorite podcast? One person did. <laughs> uh, he's the best, or she. They're he or the she, they are awesome. Everyone, and of course. Uh, the, the, the rest if you're of listening you. to this, <laughs> if you're listening to this, and you think, "Oh, this podcast is okay," you're you're awesome too. Even even if you think this podcast sucks, if you made it this far, you know what? You're not too bad. Yeah. At least. At least you, you heard us all out. <laughs> and I know it must have been painful and difficult. I hate I hate when I listen to people who are like debating and when I take the side of one of them more than the other and I just become infuriated <laughs> that they're they're not communicating like it's yeah, yeah. that they aren't making the exact points that I make. So somebody makes yeah. a statement and I have like these points and the uh, and the guy he attacks these points instead and I'm like you fool. You fool! It's these points. That's how I imagine the people who download our uh, Code Gears discussion are like. They have some kind of <laughs> counter argument that is never brought to up, everything. and they they're just seething because they have a counter they're argument that angry. they want to scream at us, but they can't. Uh, and I, I am the only one defending the show, and it's just like, yeah, it's dumb, but I like it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's the extent of it. Would Would you say that Code Gears is objectively bad? Uh, yeah. Insofar as wow, well, I mean, insofar as it is, you know, as much as I, ha- yeah, as much as I hate Code Geass, I'm not gonna say it's objectively bad. Well, you're wrong. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, let's uh, not get into that. Uh, <laughs> All right, well, that's it. I don't know. I don't know what it aspired to be. Anyway, uh, uh, that's it. Uh, sorry for the uh, the, the topic headache. going off the rails like that. We'll we'll try to be we'll try to stay more on topic next time and fail to do we so. We say that every time and we don't. Yeah, we should really right. get uh, we should really get a uh, a host of the podcast who knows what he's doing, right, Boken? <laughs> oh, me. <laughs> nice stab there, buddy. Yeah, really appreciate that. Yeah. All right, that's it, everyone. Bye bye. Dick it is. What? We... Dick it is. Is that a thing? Are we not going to talk yeah. about what we're doing? Oh, yeah. Shit. I, okay, I guess. <laughs> I mean, I, mean <laughs> I can cut the podcast well, right here. Well, the last time we recorded was only like a oh, week ago, true. so. I'm gonna. Ha- I'm just gonna say the same things. I think Acer's gonna say the same things, and all you're gonna say is, "I've been playing Street Fighter." <laughs> Come on, I'm gonna go to a tournament next week, and then next month too, and I'm gonna talk about it, and you can't stop me. Fine. That was a, that was objectively a very good guess, Daniel. <laughs> Excuse me for taking something seriously. <laughs> Bye bye. Alright. Dickitus. What is what is Dickitus? Is it from something? I don't think that registers to anybody. The international community is not gonna take that sitting down, Daddy. <laughs>